So, yoga and joining and the tattvas, looking at the sheet. So we've already considered the Panchamahabhutaha, the five great elements, the five building blocks, if you like, of life, and the Tanmatraha, the realms of sense experience associated with each of those five elements. Now we're going to move up the sheet to the next ten. The next ten here. The Indriyaha. So we have the Gyanindriyaha and the Karmindriyaha. So check, you can see the Gyanindriyaha and the Karmindriyaha. Now the Gyanindriyaha, Gyana means knowing and Karma means action. So Gyanindriyaha are the Indriyas of Gyana, the Indriyas of knowing, the sense powers, the powers of knowing, and the Karmindriyaha are the powers of action. So the Indriyaha, sometimes you might see them translated as the senses, but more than that, the Indriyaha are powers. You are a powerful being. You have tremendous powers resident within the field of your existence. Is this not true? Let's consider it. Have you ever felt yourself being pulled in different directions by your senses? Your sense of smell is pulling you one way. Your sense of hearing enticing you another way. Right now I can hear the birds singing outside. I don't know if you can, if the microphone picks it up. I can also hear the wind. The bird song's very beautiful. Now the sun's come out and my uh, vision sees the sunlight. It's enticing me outside. But I also see the video camera in front of me asking me to complete this video for the teacher training course. So I feel I'm, I'm pulled in different directions, for example. The senses have powers, but the five senses, the Gyanindriyaha, which we can look at from the top. So we've got Shrotra, hearing, Tvak, touch, Chakshu, seeing, Jiffa, tasting, and Grana, smelling. So these we're all familiar with, our five sense powers, but we also have the five Karmindriyaha, Vark, which means speech, Pani, mm, dexterity, picking up, putting down, manipulation, Pada, movement and locomotion, Payu, excretion, and Upasta, procreation. Now, that's what it says in the sheet, but let's look at this a bit more in a bit more detail. These five Karmindriyaha, five action powers that are inherent within each of us as human beings. You mentioned Vark. Now you can see on the, this gesture, if I don't have a, such a big space to work in right here, but Vark. So maybe do this, put your hands around the level of your throat and then reach them out and say Vark. 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 Yes, do it. Don't worry if someone's watching, do it. Vark. Vark is not just speech. It's also expression, articulation. It relates to our higher linguistic capacity as human beings. Pani. Yes, Pani means picking up and putting down. It means our manual dexterous capacities, our capacities to manipulate all our manual capacities. As human beings, we have these opposing thumbs. So again, it's I highlighting some of these particular powers of human beings. With these opposing thumbs and all these different manual capacities, we've done so many different things that have helped us rise to the top of the food chain. Pada means locomotion. Just as the seat of Vark, which is expression and communication, is here, our voice box, but our arms and our movement also help us express. Pada's seat is said to be in the feet. It's, we are bipeds. However, Though we are bipeds, as human beings, we have many movement capacities. It's very striking when we look out into the animal kingdom, how generally speaking, our movement capacities are vastly inferior in certain domains compared to most other animals. Consider an ant, a little ant. 
how strong it is in relation to the size of its body. It can jump several times the height of its own body. I, I really like basketball. I played a lot of basketball when I was a kid. And there are some basketball athletes who can jump very high. But they can never jump several times their own body height like an ant does effortlessly. Even your most unathletic ant <laughs> far outstrips the human jumping capacity, for example. Then we know that certain bird, birds, did you ever hear as a kid people talk, oh, you bird brain, like, you know, suggesting that the birds don't have a great intelligence. But birds know how to migrate across continents. Birds know how to, some types of birds, know how to identify which flowers will have the food that they need, not by uh, the sight perception that we rely on, but by a much subtler one that allows them to see it from a much greater distance, for example. And talking of birds, well, they can fly. Can we? Again, coming back to basketball, Michael Jordan, who you may have heard of, sometimes people talked about him as Air Jordan because he could fly for a couple of meters. A couple of meters. Birds fly between continents. Then I mentioned basketball, like some other sports people, like some people like combat sports, yeah? And some people think they're really tough, but I wouldn't fancy, you know, putting them against a uh, crocodile or um, a lion or a tiger or, or a gorilla. Mm -hmm. or a shark, well, yeah, we're not so tough after all, are we? Even if we're very conditioned and trained in the martial arts. Monkeys. See, but it, maybe if you like, if you like, if you ever try rock climbing, my first rock climbing experience was in a place called Krabi in Thailand, where there's uh, limestone cliffs next to the ocean. And there's one wall there where there's a big range of climbing routes, some that are very suitable for beginners, like I was that day. So it was a very, you know, uh, easy route, let's say, plenty of holes for the hands and the feet. But just next door, you've got a much more advanced route. And um, that day, I remember climbing next to an Italian man who had grown up in the Dolomite Mountains in Italy and been climbing since before he can remember, you know, since, since he was a very, very small boy. And he made his way up this route that to me looked almost impossible. Like he was climbing, he made it look like he was just climbing a ladder. It was just so easy for him. But then some monkeys came along. And then they scaled the rock face and made him look like he made me look. They made this expert human climber look like really a novice. They scampered up the cliff face so easily, the monkeys. All this is to say, as movers, what's special about a human being? When it comes to VARC and expression, we have this higher linguistic capacity. When it comes to the hands, we have this very extensive manual dexterous capacity compared to other animals. What about movement? In many ways, we seem so inferior to other species, but there's something that's outstanding. One is the bipedalism. We can run and walk over long, long distances better than other creatures. But the only other thing that we can do better than other creatures is really what we might call our broad spectrum movement. Like if you put us into the sea next to a seal or a penguin, it's almost like it's stretching it to say we can swim because we're such an inferior swimmer to the seal or the penguin. But when the seal or the penguin comes onto land, we realize our swimming capacity in the, in the water relative to the seal or the penguin's walking capacity on Earth is actually superior. So we we might not be great swimmers, but we we can make a reasonable go at it. We can do lots of different things reasonably well. So, if we're thinking about yoga, and we're thinking about these karmendriyaha, 
speech and expression, picking up, putting down, movement, we can use this, these, as lenses to inquire is how can I invite yoga into my day to day? Is my impression, are my impressions and my expression balanced? Am I expressing myself as I need to in the world, in my relationships? Am I expressing myself authentically? Am I using language in a way that is conducive to a deeper harmony within my body and soul, for example? Picking up and putting down. Now, it's not just physical objects that I can pick up and put down. What else can I pick up and put down? Ideas. Those most dangerous things called beliefs. Moods, emotions, infections, all sorts of things. I have the capacity to pick things up. I also have the capacity to, pick th to put things down. Pada, movement and locomotion. Am I moving through life how I want to? And am I moving my body how I really need to in order to invite it into a state of greater harmony. So thinking back to what we spoke about, about Hatha Yoga and the five elements, can I bring that grounded, fluid, warming, light, graceful, spacious movement into all aspects of my life? And if I am to do that, perhaps it will be worthwhile practicing moving across a greater range of movement than is my habit. For example, as human beings you mentioned, we can climb to some degree, we can swim to some degree, we can crawl, we can jump, we can twist, we can turn, we can lunge, we can roll. Do we practice these things? If not, I recommend that we do practice them. The wonderful thing happens when we move in ways that we are not used to moving. Is that when we move in a way we're not used to moving, we actually create new synaptic connections in our nervous system. We make ourselves more connected. It's a great way to invite yoga, is to move, obviously sensibly, appropriately, in ways that reach beyond our habitual ways of moving. When we practice moving in ways that reach beyond our habitual ways of moving, it helps us think in ways that reach beyond our habitual ways of thinking, helps us look and perceive in ways that reach beyond our habitual ways of looking. It's a great yoga practice. So moving the joints, moving the spine in different ways, great practices. So we've got a vark, speech, expression, articulation, pani, picking up, putting down, pada, locomotion. The last two, payu and upasta. Now on the sheet it says excre excretion and procreation. However, payu and upasta does not just mean uh, elimination and evacuation, going to the toilet, and then making more human beings. Payu is more than just going to the toilet, and payu is more than just making babies. And upasta, excuse me, is more than just making babies. Payu, we have, yes, we have this digestive capacity, we have an assimilative capacity, and we have the capacity to leave behind things that no longer serve us, and what a tremendous gift this is. We have the capacity to leave behind things that no longer serve us. I mentioned already with Pani, we can pick things up, we can put things down. We have the capacity to free ourselves of that which is no longer serving us very important part of yoga practice. Yoga is about transformation. It's about becoming more of the whole of who we really are. And in order to do that, we often have to leave things behind to make way, to make space for a new, fresher, fuller, more real recognition of who we really are. Upasta, procreation. But it's not just, as I said, making more human beings. This is our creative capacity. It includes recreation, very important in yoga. Now, recreation, in English, 
is associated with games and sports and things we do to have fun. In other European languages, the same cognate word, la recreation in French, recre recreation in Italian, recreo in Spanish, this is the word that's used to describe that most important part of the school day. The most important part of the school day, what am I talking about? Sometimes in English it's known as break or recess in American English, but its better name is playtime. Why do I say it's the most important part of the school day? Because when we play, we go beyond our habitual norms. When we play, we do things we've never done before. So thinking of movement, for example, when two great tennis players, for example, if you think of Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal, they have spurred each other to greater heights because they bring out the best in each other, for example. When two people play the game and they're making an effort, they're playing seriously, they help each other access deeper resources or reserves within each other. Similarly, let's say you're in the playground and you make up a game. The game will have rules. The confinement of the rules of the game demands ingenuity, creativity. Sometimes, right now I'm in the town I grew up in, uh, stay, I'm at my father's place, um, and it's a small town, and if one walks, like right now, it's, we're all in, in, con I'm in quarantine right now, at the time of recording this, but if I walk into town, and when the schools are open, um, I walk past the playground and I see kids playing. And I'm always very heartened whenever I walk past at that time of day, at lunchtime or one of the break times, because I see, contrary to what is sometimes said these days, kids still do know how to play. I see kids being inventive. I see them trying out new things, trying to walk on their hands, trying to do cartwheels. I see them playing chasing games and games where they're, they're with, with skipping ropes, with hopscotch, all different types of games that demand these new neurological connections. And I see them playing games where they're making up games, they're making up new rules. One of my teacher's teachers says, never leave the playground. I think it's excellent advice. Because if we keep playing seriously, <laughs> we can keep fostering these new neurological connections. Now, when I first went to study in India, in my first year, I met the father of the man who would become my main Sanskrit teacher. And at the, when I met him, he was 74 years old. And he was 74 years old, lustrous, like a dynamo, so vibrant and alive and so full of wonder and curiosity. His beautiful, beautiful man, beautiful radiant skin, very healthy and very interested and curious. And this is a man, he's 74, he's a revered elder. He's now retired. In his retirement, he's tending his own little organic farm, raising heritage breed indigenous Indian cows. So he's got his own ghee and milk products, growing uh, traditional vegetables, having his own rice. And he's also doing research into the use of Sanskrit for artificial intelligence on the side. He's full of curiosity. He's learning new things. He's doing things that he didn't have time for before, but he's so alive. He's Life is a play. Life is a dance for him. And they say in the Indian tradition that the peak of a human life is 85 years old. Sometimes in the West we get told this ridiculous idea is all downhill once you get to 30 or some ridiculous juvenile age like that. In the Indian system they say on a 100 to 120 year lifespan, 85 is the peak. And then when death comes, when death is approaching, you can move into it smoothly and easily, whenever that is. But all the way to 85, you can still be on the up and up. Then there will be a gentle, then there'll be a kind of... But if you practice 
wonder and curiosity, if you practice recreating yourself, if you maintain and cultivate a playful, explorative, inquiring attitude, you can keep learning just as quickly as young children and teenagers learn into your adulthood. So the recreational capacity is absolutely vital for yoga. If we want to discover, uncover, recover all of who we are, play is one of the best ways to do it. And I would say in yoga today, oftentimes people are a lot far too serious about it. You've got to be playful and light about your work with yoga techniques. But you've got to play seriously. Be playful, be light, be inquiring, be explorative. Remember the most important thing in yoga that you do not know. Remember that qualification, to be born and to know I don't know. And when I know I don't know, I invite in that spirit of wonder, inquiry and exploration, which helps me keep learning, which helps me maintain a playful attitude that is conducive then to sustained development, sustained growth and uncovering and recovering. So, Considering the Indriyaha, we've looked now at the Karmindriyaha of Vakpani Pada Painupasta. Our speech and articulation, our picking up and putting down, our movement, our digestion assimilation and elimin our digestion assimilation and elimination, and our creative capacities. We can ask with any of them. Are they in balance? Am I honoring my creativity? Am I harnessing my recreational capacity, for example? So any one of these tattvas can serve as a wonderfully rich lens for inquiry. So we've spoken briefly there about the karmendriyaha. Next video, we're going to go up to the sense powers, the jnanendriyaha.